I'm sad to say we've reached the end of our Oracle X deep dive series. But for this final video, I want to talk about two pages that we didn't discuss before that are exclusive to the Play Audio One U. And then I want to wrap up with two bonus tips uh, that I think will be really, really helpful, whether you're using the Play Audio One U or not. First, let's talk about those two pages that we haven't discussed before. And I guess before I even get into this, if you want to see the whole series, this is our last video. Click the links below this video and we'll we'll show you every single video in the series and you'll be a, a Oracle X master by the end of this. But the, the two pages I want to talk about that are exclusive to the Play Audio One U is first our audio page and then second is our control ports page. And this is not a how-to, it's just an understanding what they are, what they're there for, you get it, right? So clicking into our audio page over on the Play Audio One U, we see a lot of different things on this page. I actually want you to jump all the way over to the right. And again, I'm going to try really hard not to do a deep dive into this, but just point out some things. First, I always try to make the decision, do I want outputs uh, 13 and 14 to be additional outputs? If so, like click outputs here, or do I want them to function as a headphone output? And I typically um, uh, want my Play Audio One U uh, headphone output to function as headphones, not outputs 13 and 14, but you can choose that there. So that's why I like starting over on that side. Now in the middle, we have uh, the ability to arm our failover, to disarm our failover, plus get some status on failover. And failover is all tied into redundancy. So we can set up two computers. If one goes down, the other automatically takes over, which is great. We get some information on that here. Next, we see scene A and then scene B. And we can toggle between scene A and scene B directly from Oracle X and get access to that. Next thing we have is all of our outputs on our device. So we could, for example, go in, uh, I have mine muted right now, but I could go in and turn up the output for output one, could go turn up output two and uh, different options here. I could type in automatically, for example, type zero if I wanted. I could mute that particular output if this was like a temporary thing or something. Um, really easy to do. Uh, so we can do all that for all 12 of our outputs. I personally suggest setting all of your outputs uh, to zero um, so that you get all the possible maximum output available on your interface. Below that, though, is the headphone output setting. So we can create a specific headphone mix so we can monitor from our headphone output. Uh, this is great if I'm making last minute edits and I'm not connected to the in-ear system or uh, the front of house audio engineer isn't around. I can mute all of my outputs to front of house and I can hear just things specifically. I have kind of my main volume here. I can mute that. I can adjust that. And then I can adjust levels here, mute, solo, set it to stereo, whatever I need to do. Pro tip here, uh, whatever output your LTC or SMPT is coming out of, I tend to leave that muted for headphones so that I don't have to hear that while I'm uh, while I'm monitoring and making changes, which is great. Uh, at the bottom of this sample rate, we can choose our sample rate that will require a reboot. Uh, we should close our DAW, reopen it if we do that. Uh, failover settings, this is all specific, again, to the Play Audio One U, but a lot of stuff that can uh, be adjusted there. We'll do a deep dive on that uh, later. We can mute all of our outputs. We could unmute all of our outputs, which is helpful. Max all levels, what I was doing before four where I was individually going through that's a really great setting to find there. Um, and then we have the ability to, to control these faders and these settings with a MIDI controller, uh, which we could click that to do that. And then here's our settings. Once they're mapped, you'd see them listed here. Again, we've got specific videos showing you how to make that happen. Next, let's get out of this page and let's go to our second page that's, again, exclusive to the Play Audio One U, and that's our Control Ports page. So we can click in here. We, we've done um, a deep dive into this. Uh, I, we'll link that video up. But again, you can see all the different information here, what type of um, uh, settings you're going to use, momentary or latching. And then you can go to Input Actions, and this really is where the magic happens, where you can have one button press on your, your foot controller, do a multitude of things. And MIDI controls, all sorts of different things, change scenes, do a lot of, of really cool stuff. So I would encourage you to check out that deep dive video and then would encourage you to spend some time just uh, kind of fiddling with this page and learning all that is possible and all that you can do, which is great. Now let's talk about those two finest, uh, final bonus tips. Um, whether you're using the Play Audio One, you are not, this applies to all iConnectivity interfaces. And I think it's a great way to end this series. And one of these, I kind of tucked into one of these videos, I can't remember which it is, but that is, um, if, if you're doing a lot of MIDI routing or you tend to have a more complex setting uh, set up, it might be helpful to rename your, your actual MIDI connection. So for example, DIN1, if I've got my drum pad connected to DIN1, you may want to click this pencil icon here and it's say, instead of seeing DIN1, maybe change this to drum pad. 
and hit save. Then everywhere that DIN1 is mentioned in Oracle X, you'll see the name reflected to be Drumpad, which is great. Super powerful, um, real easy to, to view this and, and make this a little easier to see, which is great. Um, so that's one pro tip that will help you do MIDI routing. Uh, particularly with host ports. Uh, I think this was the video where I snuck this in. If I'm doing a host port reservation, often I'll go in and rename this and call this, uh, let's say, playback MIDI, something like that. Uh, and then I'll hit save. And again, that's reflected on MIDI routing. It's reflected all across the software, uh, which is just going to make it a little easy. Oh, host one, playback MIDI. Yep, that's what I'm looking for, right? Makes it really easy to see. We can do this both with inputs and outputs as well to rename, which is awesome. Final thing, we did do an entire deep diving video uh, in, in, on this. But I want to um, uh, end with this because I think it's super important. Hope is not a good backup plan. So what I would encourage you to do is once you get your settings kind of set and you're ready to go, uh, one, save them on your device, and then two, back up all of your presets. So number one, uh, we can go into presets here and we can save those presets on our device. So we could do save to all presets, for example, here. Um, that's super important. Once you've got those settings made, save those presets, very, very important. But the second piece of this that's super important is backup and restore. Once I've saved those, go to backup and select your, uh, your presets that you wanna backup and then uh, name your backup. Let's call this XL backup here. And then save that. I'm saving it on my desktop. I would highly encourage you to save that on a hard drive somewhere that's archived so that if in case you need those, uh, you could either email them to someone. I once was on vacation and got a frantic text from a friend of mine, a student and a client that I've worked with in the past. And he said, hey, we were in a completely different country. We've got a brand new rig. Uh, can you send me that preset file um, uh, that you had backed up and was able to email him those presets, which was great and everything worked. Uh, so super important, I would say to back up one, save your presets, number two, back up those presets so that if you need to load them on a new interface, um, you have them because hope is not a good backup plan. So actually have a backup. Okay, that's it. That's our deep dive into Oracle X. Uh, if you have a suggestion on, hey, you want to see a new video on this, you want to see a deep dive into this, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and if uh, we didn't answer your question in this video, one, check out all the other videos in this series, you'll see those linked up. And if that doesn't help, then you can reach out to our support team. You can find all the articles on our knowledge base by clicking the link below. And if that doesn't help, then you can submit a ticket to our support team. They'd be more than happy to get you up and running and uh, get everything sorted for you. Thanks so much for watching this series. Thanks for following along. And as always, we'll see you on the next one. Have a great day. Take care, everybody. Bye.